This is going to be a lightning tutorial on how to quickly set up Docker on your, uh, on your server to quickly serve Apache, Nginx, WordPress, and Node.js application right from the same server on different ports. So this is not a tutorial to introduce you what Docker is, but it's rather a hands-on practical tutorial to show you how you can quickly use Docker to build um, your applications. So we will put a video later on to show you detailed introduction to Docker. But for now, if you're looking for intro video, this is not it. This is a quick lightning tutorial. So we will be leveraging DigitalOcean to help us set up our Docker server. DigitalOcean is a uh, is a sim private server provider where you can quickly go to find to start up an instance and at a really really cheap price. I highly recommend it and we're going to use it for this tutorial. So if you haven't signed up for Docker, you can use the link in the description. Once you signed up, you will be greeted to this control panel. Here we should create a new droplet by clicking on this button. And then you can name your droplet something. So this is the name of your server. I'm just going to call it my test server. And here we can select the size of the servers. So I'm just going to pick the $5 a month server. Pick our region. And then down here on under select images, we need to go to applications. And then here we need to find Docker 1.8.1 on 1404. And here we'll just leave it. And then if you have a SSH key uh, created for Docker, I mean for DigitalOcean, you should use it. And then you just have to click create doc droplet and it will take a few minutes to start it all up. So after you created the droplet, you will see this green color here, meaning it's active. And you'll be given an IP address. So I already created one, so let's just SSH into it. Enter our password. And you're in. So this uh, server will have Docker installed on the Ubuntu machine. So first, let's create an Apache server. So with Docker, you can create an image from a Docker file. So on the server, I've created a folder called Apache. Uh, let's go inside Apache. And then inside, you'll see a Docker file. So let's see what this Docker file looks like. So it's basically a you're telling it to create the Docker image from Ubuntu 14.04 and then you type your maintainer information here and then you can run the command to start it up. So this is the command that it runs. We just need to update our APT repository and then we install um, I'm, I'm sorry, we we install Apache 2 with the yes flag and then we need to expose port 80 from within the container and then we call the command Apache 2 and then call it foreground. So this will basically automate the task for you to start up the Apache server. So in order to do, to do that we need to create a docker image from this docker file. So you do docker build st and then we can call it test Apache and then call, give it a 0, um, 0.1 and then the dot at the very end here tells it to look for the docker file in this folder so this will start download the Ubuntu image from docker hub which is the default repository hub for docker it will download it and then it will also download the Apache image so this is not a full-blown virtual machine image but it's a docker image which is much much lighter than a, than a full-blown image so we'll give it a few seconds and it quick quickly um, installs the image and then runs the command that we ask it to run so now we have the images created you can type docker images and as you can see we have our test apache image and also the ubuntu image which it pulls from the docker file description so now we have the image ready, we can run a container with this image. 
by doing docker run we want it to run in interactive mode and then the name we can give it a name called my apache container and then we need to pass pass d slash p which is for port forwarding so we want our um, apache server to serve from port 80 inside the container to map it out to the port 1337 of our droplet and here we need to give it an image id and when you get this message this means this uh, container has been successfully created we can check it by doing docker ps and as you can see this image is currently active so if we go to our server right now it will and port 1337 we should get the apache um, star welcome page so let's copy this IP and then we'll do 1337 and as you can see this is an Apache 2 server running on Ubuntu so docker make th makes this extremely simple to set up your applications so next let's do nginx so we're able to run multiple applications on different ports on a single server so for Nginx, it's really simple. Which is, so there are two ways to create images and run them. One is the doing the Docker file way, and the other one is to leverage the community images that Docker has on the Docker Hub. So let's do this from the Docker Hub um, repository. So we do docker run name. Let's call this my Nginx container. That's the P. And then we want to run the port 1338 to map it to the Nginx. So this it's unable to find Nginx locally, so it goes out to Docker Hub and fetch the Nginx image. So this image is a community image, meaning somebody created a Docker file for it, so you don't have to do anything yourself. So this means our image is done. We do Docker images. As you can see, there's an Ubuntu image created. So let's just grab this image ID. So um, th this uh, community Nginx image will automatically start it up for you. So actually, if we do Docker PS, you should see Nginx already running on port 1338. So it's mapping port 443 and port 80 to 1338 on our server. Now, if we go to port 1338, as you can see, it's Nginx. It just started running. Nginx is there, and also the Apache is still there. So we have two Docker containers running, serving on different ports. Now let's install WordPress. WordPress is one of the most popular CMS on the web. So first, we need to do Docker pull. We're going to use this image created by the community called Tudom WordPress. So this will goes out to Docker Hub and hold all the images necessary to have WordPress running on your machine. So things like Apache server, MySQL, uh, and the WordPress installation files, all of that are done within this image. So you don't have to go out there and do it yourself. So this is a bit big. We have to give it a few minutes and wait. This image will also run everything for you and it will tell you the status of the image when you run it. So now we have, let's do Docker images and check. We have a Tudon WordPress image. So let's do a container and then we'll name it my WordPress container. So same deal, we just need to forward the port. So this one we wanted to run on the main port of our server. Let's say you're starting up a, your own blog. This will be really helpful. So as you can see, it's outputting messages from within the container. Here's doing installing MySQL and then starting up and creating the database for your WordPress installation. So everything seems to be successful here and we'll just have to go to our server right now on port 80 and let's see what happens. And look at that, we have WordPress installation screen. 
So basically, WordPress is set up for you. Like everything is set up. You just need to say, just fill in this um, data here, and then you are good to go. I have to provide an email address. So it's extremely simple. So remember, we're running WordPress on top of Apache and Ubuntu on the same server. And there you go, you have a WordPress blog. Quick and simple. Now the next thing we want to try is uh, Node.js. Since Node.js is one of the most popular uh, servers that around, we need to show you how to install Node.js container in Docker. So I have a folder called Node.js here. Um, if you're wondering, I'm going to commit the sample Docker files into the repository you can find in the description. So for Node.js, let's look at our Docker file. So it's really a simple Docker file. It's basically getting Node from this location and then it's exposing port 8888. Now the only requirement for this docker file is if you look at this directory, I have an index and package JSON set up. In your package JSON, you need to identify the start script. So here I have a start of basically calling node on the index.js. Um, this has a dependency on express for the example. So if I look at index.js, it's a simple express server with hello world in the H1. So this uh, Docker image will look for this file, copy it to the container, and then serve it. So to do that, we need to do docker build st my node image 0 0.1. Um, Let's see, I think I did something wrong. So it has a Docker file. Oh, right, so you had to say dots at the very end to say look for the Docker file within this, content, within this directory. So here is downloading the web server information image, the, the Node.js image, and it will basically build a image on based on your configuration. So Docker is really useful. If you imagine doing all of this manually on a single server, it will take you a lot of time to set it up. With Docker, you can start and stop a container very easily by doing a few simple commands. I will show you later how to stop and remove containers. So now it's done installing. We just need to check. So you can see the no image is there. So what we have to do now is basically do docker run. We'll call it this my no JS container. And then we wanted to map the port AAAA of our server to port, port, A, port AAAA of our container and give it an image ID. Oh, so apparently this container exists. So I was doing the test earlier. We can, if the container exists, you can do docker rm my node.js container, and it will remove any previous container with the same name. So now if we do it again, it should let start running. So apparently it's not able to find the package JSON file which we have it here um, so we need to let's see so it's not able to find it let's do docker images so we have my node image here ah, we, I was running off from this image but it should be this image which is the one I built so you have to do docker run name. So let's see if the broken docker 
container I created is still there. So let's do Docker RM just in case. All right, so let's remove. So we need to basically get the build the container from the correct image. This is the ID we should use. So you do Docker run name my Node.js container. And then paste the ID in. So now, as you can see, it tells you we have our example app running at port eight 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 eight. So if we do go to port eight 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 eight, and you can, as you can see, it's a hello world from Node.js. Now, as you uh, this thing is running in the interactive mode, you in order to quit from this, you don't have to do Control C. You have to do Control P, Control Q. Um, sorry, this is not running IT mode. So IT, when you run things in IT mode, it will run in interactive mode. When you can quit by using Control P and Control Q, and the Docker container was still running. So you can do this by checking Docker PS. So here we have. Um, so when I did Control C on the Node.js container, it stops and it quits. So if I remove, refresh this, it will not happen. So in order to fix that, we need to do, so let's remove the image first. So you have to pass it a flag called IT. Now this will start the server again. However, this time if I do Control P, Control Q, it will quit me out of this container. But when I do Docker PS, as you can see, the Node.js is still running. So it doesn't quit my container, and it's still running. So that's about it for uh, this lightning tutorial. I hope you learned something new and useful. I'll start doing a detailed no um, Docker tutorial for beginners. See you next time.